Good morning, everybody. Host Eric here. This is my largely failed attempt <laughs> to care about what it looks like in the background. <laughs> I this is why I hate visual aesthetics. <laughs> you know, they're so hard, you know. It's like I cannot get the lighting right. I can't get anything right on this. Uh, sensory information like like what the background looks like is important to a lot of people right but I, I, INTPs, INFPs, ENTPs, ENFPs it's not important to us and what I would like to do is provide fan service you know it's like just because I'm not into looking at things I never watch videos I listen to them but um, uh, it's still important you know that people get having a pleasant thing to look at in the background rather than like see piles of mucus or something <laughs> anyway um, that's not what this is about this is about doctors and the proper understanding of them and the proper relationship to them that people ought to have if they want to be optimal in their relationships with doctors. First of all, the thing to remember about doctors is if they're any good, they're doing their job properly, which means they're only knowing things that are appropriate to be known. So when we have a good doctor like Rachel's doctor Dr. Ingram he's full of I don't knows because things haven't been established adequately in professional journals medical journals which is the you know double blind studies and stuff which is the only way a good doctor knows things okay a bad doctor might be right about things but know them the wrong way so for example we had an ENTJ neurologist who told us that neuropathy linked to nitrous oxide and that we needed to stop it immediately what made him a bad doctor even though he was right is that he didn't have good justifications to make that claim I researched the medical journals myself. It's been failed to be established adequately the link by via double blind studies. So it doesn't matter what his doctorly experience tells him, that's not a good doctor because he's knowing things the wrong way. And it's certainly not a good doctor for me because I expect doctors to explain and justify their positions, all of them. They are not there to tell me what to do. They are there to inform me of their opinion, which then they need to justify adequately. And if they can't, then that's fine. But they need to have that, that relationship with the patient, right? They need to have their relationship is, here's what my knowledge informs you of. And I'm a good doctor, so I only know things the right way, which means I'm full I don't knows, right? And I'm not here to tell you what to do, I'm here to answer your questions and inform you in the way that you need to be informed because after all it's your body and all of the actual healing that goes on is done by your body not by doctors now here's the thing scientists provide us very useful medical information and, and tools and chemists provide us wonderful drugs and stuff like that right note that those people are not doctors so, yes, it is the case that everybody should be vaccinated with real vaccines for everything. Anybody who's opposed to vaccines is just an idiot. Um, the, thing, the, the problem with the COVID vaccine is not that it's some sort of secret plot or whatever. It's that, as I said from the very beginning, it's not a vaccine. You can't vaccinate against those kind of viruses. So, anyway... Um, 
I took it because I had to to see my mom. I wasn't worried about it having a negative impact on me. It's not going to have any impact on me, obviously. It's it's not a vaccine. You can't vaccinate for those kind of viruses. Duh. I said this all be years ago, right? Before all the bullshit happened. I explained why this was all not to be advised, right? But anyway, regardless, just because nobody listened to me then, that's fine. It's a good reason to listen to me now, though, right? So, um, <laughs> after all, I'm, I have a proven track record of being 100% correct in my analysis about the most global, the biggest global problem in the history of mankind. In advance, before any of it happened. So, it's a good reason to listen to me. Now. Even if you didn't listen to me then, right? You have ample example of somebody who needed to be listened to and wasn't, right? So, anyway, what I'm saying about doctors is this. Good doctors know only what they are supposed to know by, via the proper channels of knowledge. Google Scholar, right? Not Reddit threads. Unfortunately, if you want actual information about how drugs impact people, your best source of information is a Reddit thread, not a doctor. A doctor who is telling you don't do nitrous because it causes neuropathy is a bad doctor even though he's correct because he doesn't have adequate means of knowing that professionally and he has a professional duty to only know things the right way. Certainly, he has a professional duty not to tell us what to do without justifying himself adequately, right? Without explaining why it is the case that this, that this is linked and why it is defensible that he can make this affirmation, right? The fact is, he couldn't defend it. The only way he would have been able to defend it is by referencing anecdotal data which is not acceptable for a professional doctor to do, right? He's got a responsibility to be responsible with his words and with his understanding of the words know and the word believe and the word think and the word feel and those kind of words, right? He has a responsibility to use them correctly because he's a doctor. Good doctors don't know most of the time and tell you that. Most doctors never tell you that. That's why there are very few good doctors. The best doctor would have told me, I don't know and cannot establish a link between nitrous oxide and neuropathy, but I recommend you go read and read threads about it. That's what the best doctor would have said. This is why you can trust doctors for certain things and not for other things, right? If you are injured, go to a doctor. They're great at repairing injuries, broken bones, things like that, because those things require another individual's interference for your body to heal. Most of the time, almost all the time, doctors can do absolutely nothing, right? The only reason they exist at all is because they have the power to prescribe drugs. Surgeons exist for a reason. Doctors don't. Your body is responsible for healing itself. If you've got a problem like diabetes, you need to lose weight, not to get, not have to go to a doctor, right? So, you know, you can fuck yourself up royally, in which case you need a, a long-term prescription. Unfortunately, doctors are the gatekeepers of those prescriptions because they couldn't be any worse parties to be in charge of prescribing drugs than doctors. After all, good doctors don't know anything. So that's how the relationship with doctors should be. Understand what their role is. They're there to, for fixed injuries. They are not there to give checkups or other things, tell you whether you're okay or not, try to find things wrong with you, etc. Right? 
That's not the good thing that doctors can possibly do. The good thing that doctors can do is tell you, I don't know, and prescribe some drugs, and then ask you, how did that work for you? And then, well, let's try these other combination of drugs, right? Ideally, there wouldn't be a gatekeeper of that. I could try random <laughs> assortments of drugs myself just fine. I, I don't need a doctor to do this, right? But as I told Dr. Uh, Ingram at the end of a, what had to be a shocking, an absolutely shocking session for him, that, that was totally unprecedented for him, I'm sure, where I went in there and grilled the fuck out of him about everything and proved everything he was saying was best conditional, etc. I asked all the right questions. I'm, a, I'm the world's greatest fucking debate coach, so of course I shredded his ass. But to his credit, to his immense credit, he spent the whole time answering all of my questions and conceding, I, I, I don't know. I, 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 yeah, I intimidate the living fuck out of him. It's obvious when we went and, and actually had a session with him in person. He was scared to tell us that Rachel was too fat at the time, even though it was shortly after that had shot himself. And so she, had, she that was her uh, coping mechanism of eating a lot at the time. But, uh, but what I did, but he, but he still managed to get up. But, you know, uh, her blood pressure is a little high and it could be... He's like scared to tell me any bad news, right? But he said, but you know, it's, it's mostly diet and exercise, not really the, the pill that's causing her to gain weight. And I was like, really? <laughs> oh, wow. Huh. I've been under the impression that it's just these pills that cause her to unavoidably gain weight. <laughs> oh. Okay, well that's useful information, thank you for that. Another useful information you told me. It's like I went in there and I was like, what the hell? I tell this doctor, prescribe clonopin to my dad. She refuses on the grounds it's going to make him fall over. And prescribes this Remeron, the number one risk factor, which is suicide. And he shortly thereafter shoots himself. I mean, and very scared of me the whole time, says, well, of course it's the number one side effect. They're giving it only to depressed people. <laughs> and anything that happens, they have to listen to the side effect. That's why you have things that both have side effects of constipation and diarrhea. <laughs> I'm like, oh, so you mean they're terrible at this. Oh, okay. I get it. Their side effect things are purely liability reducers, not information at all. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. I will no longer blame that doctor for my dad's suicide. Not that I really ever did anyway. I just blame him for being so fucking stupid. And being so scared of me, you know? It's like, I'm there with my dad. I know my dad. I know me. This doctor has just met us both. I know what my dad should get. He should get Clonovan so he can get a good night's fucking sleep. She's worried about him being old and falling over. This man is a week away from shooting himself in the head, right? She won't listen to me one bit because she's following the book. Book says you don't prescribe clonopin to old people because they fall over. This is why I was so angry in Los Angeles, right? It's like so many doctors are ESTJs or other retard types, right? That I consider retards when it comes to important things. They're fantastic at doing things like getting themselves through medical school and becoming medical doctors. But they're terrible at actually being medical doctors. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is, this is the problem with TE stuff in general, right? It's like, guess who's a bunch of lawyers? ENTJs? Some ESTJs, even? Even though they're not qualified at all to be lawyers, right? You need 
any TI to be a legal mind or TI and E. All good judges and lawyers are INTPs or ENTPs. Occasionally is to be, you know. The rest of it, that's the problem with regulating shit, right? You get everything all regulated so that I can't just establish to some party I'm fully qualified to be a judge and a lawyer. I gotta pass the bar and stuff, right? Well, you know, it's like that's too much of a hassle for me. I'm not gonna do that. So, it doesn't matter that I've got a better legal mind than every lawyer I've ever encountered, every single one, by a large margin. I'm not saying this to be boastful. It's just the truth. The lawyers are absolutely terrified of me. Doctors are also absolutely terrified of me. <laughs> but, um, but that's the problem with regulating TE shit, you know? It's like they prevent the actual talented people from getting into positions where their talent could be used and instead prioritize hoop jumping. If you're good at jumping through hoops, then you end up in the position you, you want to be in whether you're any good at, at doing that job or not. So, anyway, this is supposed to be about the proper relationship with doctors. The proper relationship with doctors is this. Number one, they are not there to tell you what to do. Number two, you are in charge of the relationship between you and your doctor. You should be dictating the conversation the entire time, every time, not the doctor. Good doctors understand this and expect it. Bad doctors say things like, look, I'm a doctor, just listen to what I'm saying. I'm the one with the medical training. We all have as much medical training as we want now, doctors. It's called the internet. I can research anything. I didn't even need to research anything when that urgent care doctor told me, pointed to this EKG and said it was a justification for why we need to take my dad to the hospital right then. And I said, okay, well, explain it to me. So, is this series of bumps and, and down things on this readout, does it indicate an impending heart attack normally? Well, no. And then she ran in terror, you know, because I caught her. I caught her in her lies, right? <laughs> because she was a terrible, terrible doctor. She didn't understand that the person who is being seeking information from the doctor should always be driving that relationship. Just like the student should always be driving the relationship with the teacher, not the other way around. If it's the other way around, it's just an, an infringement on your, your agency for no good reason. You're affording somebody who has zero deserving of, of um, authority over you, authority over you. They don't know you at all. Who, how could they possibly know your body as well as you know it, right? They couldn't. And remember, almost everything that happens with your body happens by itself. It involves no other party in engaging with you. You don't need any wellness checks. You don't need any checkups at all. You don't need to get blood work done periodically. You don't need to get this checked or that checked or the other thing checked, right? You don't need that. That's not what our human bodies are for. They're not for, we're not cars, okay? We self-repair or we don't, in which case we die. And that's okay too. The end.